What's going on, everybody? Got Perry here next to me this time because we just watched a brand new 2020 film, which I always like to say is a, it's a rarity in this year, which is <laughs> really unfortunate. But luckily, we do have some new uh, some some new films coming out this year, and this one was The Climb, which is directed by Michael Angelo Savino or Cavino. Not quite sure how to pronounce it. And he he actually stars in the movie as well. It's it's also co written by Kyle Marvin Kyle Marvin excuse who me. also stars in the film. Yeah, who also stars in the film. And what I was getting at is that Michael, who wrote and directed the movie, is plays a guy named Mike, and Kyle Marvin is in the <laughs> film, and he also plays a guy named Kyle. So they just decided to name themselves in the film. Um, so this is a film that got quite a lot of buzz out of out of out of the film festivals. Um, pretty much it's gotten nothing but praise and obviously that's going to have me naturally excited for the film. And obviously I went into this film with some pretty high hopes because of that, but that can be a little dangerous sometimes because when you go into a film with high hopes, it can sometimes let you down a bit. And the fact that we haven't had a lot of 2020 films come out this year, you know, you're really hoping to get something that's great. And for me personally, I just think this is a pretty damn great film that honestly deserves all the praise that it's getting so far because um, this film just does so much about what 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 I admire in a film. Um, the direction is probably the thing that stood out to me the most, even though everything about this film is honestly really solid. But the direction of this film was really delicate and really admirable because it's incredibly stylistic in the way that it wants to shoot everything. In the sense that this film is compiled of a bunch of long takes. It's not like Birdman or anything where, you know, the entire film was made to seem like it's one take. But this film is basically made up of 10 to 15 minute segments of just long takes. And they're shot incredibly well. And it's obviously incredibly delicate as you're watching it. And obviously, if you're going to go for that kind of style, you kind of have to have a vision for the transitions. And it definitely... It definitely... It definitely capitalizes on trying to be creative with the transitions, and it's incredibly smooth throughout that whole process. I'm not going to give away exactly like what it does, because I think it's better not knowing the kind of uh, the kind of ways it, it goes about transitioning. But it's really special when you're watching it. And um, but besides the directing, um, I did not expect this to be like a really funny movie. Um, this is honestly one of the funniest movies I've seen all year, if not the funniest film I've seen all year. But I feel like I'm talking way too much about it right now. I haven't really let Perry. I haven't really let Perry talk about it. But just know that I really, really enjoyed this film quite a bit, and um, pretty much every aspect of this film is incredibly solid. The acting, the direction, the writing, and um, it's also a really accessible film too. That I think a lot of people can watch. But with that being said, I'll let Perry. I'll let Perry go ahead and give his spiel. Yeah, I I completely agree. I was I've been really excited to watch this film for months. And it did not let me down. I'm I'm surprised we even got it. It's like it's like yes, 2020 films are still a thing. They're coming out on VOD, but most of them are just disposable garbage. This is <laughs> this is something like just like um, you kind of w- the second the film started, you knew you were in for something. No, yeah, I agree. Yeah, it, it, you always have those. Uh, you always get that feeling with those film, those truly great films. The second the movie starts, you know you're in the hands of someone that's competent. Yeah. And it's going to give you a very rewarding experience. You can tell there's so much effort put into this film just right out of the gate. Yeah. And it's all really effective. And I totally agree with Perry. Like, the first few minutes of this film, I was like, yeah, if if the film kind of keeps this up with what it's going for, I think I'm going to really enjoy it. And luckily it does. And I thought it was really, really great. Yeah, I I wasn't expecting it to be... Like you said, as uh, as funny as it was, yeah. But it's like I said, like you said, it's one of the best comedies I've seen in a while. Oh, yeah. But it definitely has the dramatic elements, but it doesn't feel like oh, it, you can tell it wasn't uh, over dramatized by design. Yeah, it's definitely not over the top. Right, they wanted to have a very uh, light, uh, um, heartfelt tone, yeah. even though there's a lot of serious things going on about the you know between the friendship. Which is interesting that the, the the guys that wrote the film, Michael, Michael Angelo Cavino and Kyle Marvin, they're actually friends in real life. 
and then they write a film and star in a film where they... It's about their friendship. Right, about yeah. their friendship. About how it devolves and how it evolves. Exactly. The cornerstone of this film is about a friendship, a guy friendship, to be more specific. Um, I know some people will probably say, oh, you know, I get some people will be turned off because it's like a bromance type of film, but it's really not like that because no. um, it's, it's not that one dimensional. Uh, this film is actually pretty deep and has a lot of substance and even though which it was a really funny movie, it, it never it never detracted from its seriousness that it was going for. Even though this is a really subdued film, it's pretty tame with its drama, but it definitely st- is still effective with its drama. And I like how it didn't feel the need to go over the top to really make you feel something because I felt I definitely felt a lot of serious emotions with this film. Yes, definitely. <clears throat> Sorry, I got fucking burps. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard this film by a friend of ours, Cynic the Critic, uh, compare it to Thunder Road, and I... That's really appropriate. Yeah, that really is appropriate. Not that I'm saying this film is as good as Thunder Road. Yeah. It is, it's not as good as Thunder Road. It's pretty great. Well, I don't know if I would fully agree. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not ready to make that statement, because I think this is at least, like, or maybe at most, on par with Thunder Road. Um, even though I think Thunder Road is a bit more dramatic, but they're definitely, in terms of quality, I wouldn't go as far as saying that it's not as good as Thunder Road because I enjoyed both of those movies a lot. And for those people who who have followed this channel, you guys know I love Thunder Road and I love Jim Cummings. The Wolf of Snow Hollow is another great 2020 film. If you haven't seen it, I would highly I would highly suggest you check it out. It's on VOD. But I think that it's, like, on par. Like, right now, I really can't decide which one that I love better, to be honest. I'm pretty sure Perry wasn't... I'm pretty sure Perry didn't know that. But I I enjoyed that film this much that I'm willing... I'm not willing to sit here and tell you that it's better than Thunder Road, but I can't tell you that it's worse. It's kind of on par with it right now for me, so... That's interesting, because I was... Because um, we it was me, Carlos, and Carlos' girlfriend, Jen, which, you, which anybody that follows this channel knows her from the short film. Short films, yeah. Um... It's interesting because I thought I enjoyed this film the uh, most, but I think you may have liked this film yeah. more than I have because for me it's like no competition. I like Thunder Road really? more. Yeah, maybe it's, I don't know. Maybe it's just bias, uh, but for me personally, I just think Thunder Road's a better written film because there were some things in um, the climb, like in terms of direction and editing. I obviously have to give it to the climb. But I think Thunder Road is a better written film. I could see, I could see that I because see that. with the the climb, the only thing that really like took me out were some of like, like, not some of like some of the cliche dialogue, like the whole uh, you know in life if you if you fall off the horse or if you fall off the bike, you just gotta get back, pick yourself back up. I get no doubt, but I get over again. It's just it's like that. It's that type of dialogue we've heard so many. Not that the dialogue, uh, most part, I really enjoyed the dialogue, but lines like that. I can see it having those me moments. Yeah. Because it just kind of feels like fortune cookie uh, fortune cookie writing, you know, like yeah. something you'd read off of fortune cookie. Not that I'm saying this film is hollow or anything. It's just like lines like that that kind of took me out. And if you're comparing it to Thunder Road. Right. But which, by the way, the reason why we're comparing it to Thunder Road is because it's similar... And honestly, a lot of different ways. The first one that comes to mind is the way it is, the way it's filmed, Mm -hmm. because again, a lot of like really long takes, but not even just that, like this film is all the way it blends drama and the way of the way it also has um, uh, comedy and humor throughout the film is also, again, it reminds me a lot of Thunder Road. Obviously with films like The Climb and Thunder Road, it's like, obviously things are heightened, but all the characters feel like real people. Oh yeah, incredibly genuine characters in yeah. this film. For the for the most part it's like you in those really tense situations um you would have humor but in life sometimes it's like that with yeah. the very uh tense situation you know you always have that comic relief moment that just yeah. kind of comes out of nowhere. It you know it's uninvited, it's unwelcome. But it still happens in the most strangest of places and at the strangest times in your life. Yeah, the characters are also put in a lot of awkward situations. I mean, there's there's a moment in this film where I was cringing, but like not in a bad way, just because it was so well directed that it couldn't help but feel the air that this film was presenting in certain scenes. And um, it can be quite awkward and cringe to sit through at certain moments because of just how these characters are. They again, they feel really authentic. 
the, the the context that's that's here in this film in certain scenes. Um, again, it's a it's a film about friendship. Um, it's also about um, like marriage as well. And I just think the way that it kind of dives into these subjects and um, the way that it explores these characters, I think it's really well fleshed out. And it's, I mean, I personally think it's a really well written film. I know Perry thinks it's not as well written. I mean, I think it's a very well written film. It's just I had my issues with the yeah. writing. But I mean, like, I think I think my issues with the writing are really like they're really kind of like nitpicky. They're really not that serious because I think this, the reason why I love the writing in this film, because there's a lot of little details about these characters that I think go a long way and are really telling. And that's, and it makes these characters feel a lot more genuine just because of those little tiny, subtle details. Yeah. I I think the, what's interesting, what I love about the film, the way it's written, the way it's presented, it's, it'll take you down certain like, cliche moments that you've seen in other films but it'll completely subvert you. it does subvert it yeah yeah there were so many films where it was like oh, there was i was getting weird vibes like i'm like there, this scene reminds me of the graduate this scene reminds me of saving silverman like, yeah i know those are two like really weird because uh, <laughs> saving silverman's a garbage comedy and the graduate's a great film but there was that one scene where I was getting like those vibes yeah. because there's certain like moments where you're like, oh my god, I've seen this. We've in seen way, this a lot. Yeah, way too many films. But the 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 climb manages to take what you've seen before and you know give a fresh spin it on it. Totally like uh, subverts what you would expect out of it because I was thinking the same thing. There's parts in here I'm like, okay, I mean it's not like I dislike it because I'm still liking the film, right? Despite the fact that we have kind of seen this in in so many different films. But then, like, I would, I would kind of, it would kind of slap me across the face because I'm like, holy shit, this film basically went a route that, you know, it, it took that cliche scene that we've all seen and then just did something that was completely different. And I really appreciated that out of this film. And that's why I think it's a really, not only well-directed, but also a really well-written film as well. And um, the actor, Michael, Michael Cavino, um, he looks... He looked. I, this Casey is, Affleck. Yes, I couldn't help but like throughout the entire film, I was like, "This guy reminds me so much of fucking Casey Affleck." Not yeah. only in the way he looks, but just like his demeanor, the way he talks, the way too. he talks. He kind of has this like soft but serious kind of voice, and it was just like it was so hard to shake that because I'm like, "This guy is so much like Casey Affleck." But I mean, it's kind of like a, I mean, it's it's kind of it's 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 not a it's not a negative thing because I mean, I, I think Casey Affleck is a pretty solid actor. And um, I think with this film, he was he was great. All the acting in this film was honestly really great. Yeah. Um, I wish I knew the name of the 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 wife character. Marissa. In this film. Marissa. Yeah. Oh man. Um, she was really good in this film too. I mean, I kind of despise her character, but it's only because she, again she's really well written and it's also really well acted that I can't I couldn't I couldn't help but just like kind of despise it. Um, but you know that's that's just a that's just. That's just only because it was it was done really well, and she was and she's just a great actress in this film. So yeah, all of her scenes really hit home for me, like on a very personal level. They're relatable, <laughs> yeah, because I've known people like Marissa, yeah. and I've been around people like Marissa. Um, so it's all of her scenes. It's like God, like you remind me of people I know, and it's just like. Yeah. You know, it just made it, it gave more the film more of an emotional resonance with me. This film made me feel. Very emotional, but not, not 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 emotional enough to me f to like be crying or anything. But it's a really emotionally effective movie just because of how it's directed and the acting and how it's written. And um, I think that for this film to achieve the the um, uh, comedy in the way that it does, because it's really funny and it's not like punchline humor either. It's not right. like sketch comedy punchline humor. It, the comedy in this film feels incredibly natural. And it doesn't feel like it's really out of place. Like you're watching like a Saturday Night Live special or Adam Sandler or something. Like it all feels incredibly fluid and natural with this film. And But the fact that it was able to, to incorporate that level of comedy and then also be incredibly effective with this drama and all the substance that it offers, um, it really, really made me appreciate and admire this film. And I'm really glad I watched it because I really had a blast with this and... I'm not going to spoil, like, where it is, you know, on my uh, uh, 2020 list or anything like that, but just know that it's going to be high up there right now. 
Uh, Possessor is the only film that I think really even comes close as to being as, as to being my favorite of the year. But just know it's going to be high up there because um, I think this film deserves all the praise it's getting. And as I said, it's a really accessible film. So this isn't a fi- well, it, it's accessible in the sense that it doesn't dim- like it's not so artsy that like it's hard for just like some casual to handle. But it's not access. It's not accessible in the sense that there are like some there there is like kind of some sex scenes in this film that I think might make some people uncomfortable because mm-hmm. it's kind of it gets a little ruthless sometimes with it I was like wow they're going all the way and showing this but it's definitely for a purpose and that's kind of what I liked about it because kind of added to the characters in this film and had a lot to say about you know who they are as people in this film but um it's definitely accessible in the sense that you know anybody that can handle you know sex in a movie and some cursing you know anybody can really watch this film and enjoy it so it's, I really enjoyed this film overall. It's funny you say that the the the, the sex uh, that may not make it accessible because yeah. it's like once you've seen films like *Nymphomaniac*, it or, seems like nothing, right? You know? It's like yeah. nothing. It's so tame. But yeah, I can definitely see people that are just like really turned off by that stuff. To you know, just like, I don't, yeah. I don't want to see that. <laughs> yeah. Even though it's like so quick, you know, it's like yeah. it's like takes up maybe like thirty seconds yeah. of the runtime. It gets still like you know somebody. It can make somebody feel really uncomfortable and be like, "Why, why, why did they go that far to show that?" For me, it makes a lot of sense that I think it was really smart stuff. But I can see somebody who may not like quite understand why they went that far in showing that, even if it's only thirty seconds. Like I, I could see somebody being like, "That's too much." Yeah. One thing we need to talk about is the music because we've oh, been yeah. talking about the transition. Yeah. But the music in this film, the soundtrack is fantastic. Yeah. Because um, the camera will literally like. It'll literally slowly pan across like characters like singing. Yeah, and there's and, these yeah there's these there's these there's these characters in the film that are kind of like they're kind of like fictional supernatural type characters who don't really even like I mean I guess they're in the film but the way that the film incorporates them it's not like natural in a way in how they are singing in the film but it's obviously a stylistic choice that ends up working for me. It might throw some people off because as I said, it's not like it's not the most natural thing. It's probably like the probably the most least natural thing in the film. But for some reason the stylistic choice of having these again like Perry said, these kind of slow pans that will lead to these kind of characters that you really haven't seen before in the film and they start singing, it just kind of works. It's obviously an, it's 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 probably the artsiest part of the film, but it it worked for me. I could see it kind of falling flat for some people, but for me, I thought it was effective. I thought yeah. it worked. There was even like a French version of We Are the Champions while people yeah. were skiing, which I yeah. thought was really interesting. And it's like, even though I don't understand French, I could just tell just by the way they were singing and like yeah. the the rhythm and the melody of the song that it was We Are the Champions just in French. Yeah, and be, yeah, like, and, and, and you know, beyond the fact that I was mentioning that it has like people singing in this film. Like there's also just like a like a normal score in this film mm-hmm. that's used in certain moments, and I thought that was really effective too. Like yeah. I, I honestly really enjoyed the song choices and the score in this film. I thought it I thought it was really well incorporated. So yeah, I'm I'm glad you brought that up because I I forgot about the score and it's a, actually a great score. So I'm glad you mentioned it because it, it it definitely it's worth mentioning. Yeah, it's like the music, all the music they picked was just so fitting for like the type of mo- emotion that they were trying to convey. Oh, yeah. It's not. It's not like it's not over dramatic either. It's it's not trying to just like pull on your heartstrings. It's not trying too hard to make it feel something. It just right. it just fits so well with what it's going for, and it's subtle. And this film overall is a really subtle film, and that's also something I really enjoyed about it. And it's not a cliche soundtrack at all. Like I've never really heard music that I've heard in this film used in other films. It's not like um, it's not like um, you know the Suicide soundtrack where you've heard. Suicide, song, squad. Uh, uh, Suicide, Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad soundtrack <laughs> where you heard like these songs. All these famous used, hits, yeah. Right, used in like a thousand other movies yeah. that are just like meaningless and have nothing to do with yeah. the film. But yeah, um, that's pretty much going to be all of our thoughts on it. I'll just give kind of my uh, final thoughts on it and then I'll go ahead and give my grade. Um, as I said, the writing and direction is incredible in this film. It's the directing and the camera work is probably my favorite aspect about it because I think it, it, it I think it really elevates this film. Um, the acting across the board is fantastic. The way it blends comedy and drama together, um, you know, it's it takes it takes skill to be able to do it the way they did, and I think it was really well done. 
Um, the themes in this film, I really like it because they're really rooted in about like real shit in real life. And I found that quite compelling the way it was explored. So, I mean, I don't really have that much issue with this film. I won't give it a perfect grade, but I'm going to definitely give it a strong 9 out of 10. Uh, this is a film that I highly recommend to everybody. I don't know when it's going to be available to everybody, but um, it was luckily playing at an art house theater in my city and we got the chance to see it. But if you ever have the chance to see this film, however way you can, I highly recommend it because I think it's a great, great film. Um, this is, I think, the only film that Michael Cavino or Savino has has made. Because um, he's a producer. He's a producer. He has. He's never written or directed a film. But now that he's done this, I mean, I hope he keeps making more films because um, I was really, really impressed by this one. Yeah, this is definitely one of the best films of the year. I I can honestly say I love this film. Um, you know, it's funny because when you walk out of it, it's one of those films where like, I really enjoyed it. But the more you think about it, you're like, oh, the more you, the more you like it, and you can even say you grow to love it. The more you think about it, um, I this is not my number one film of the year, but it's definitely like top three, one of the best films I've seen all year. Which, take that with what you will, because 2020 has just been a shit year. It's a shit show this year. Yeah. Um, but I am going to give The Climb a 9 out of 10. Oh, shit, really? I was thinking of a strong <laughs> 8, but I was like, you know what? Let me go ahead and give it a 9. I was expecting an 8, I'm going to be honest with you. I was, I, when I first came out of it, I was thinking of like a soft 8, but like the more I had time to yeah. think about it, I'm like, I'm going to give it a 9. Yeah. I'm going to give it a 9. Yeah, and I, and I can see myself watching this movie a lot. Like it's 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 not a it's not a movie that you you can only see yourself maybe watching one or two times. Like I can I feel like I could watch this movie like all the fucking time. Yeah, you could just literally just put it on at any yeah. time and it'll be perfect. Yeah. It's only an hour and forty minutes. It's not taxing at all. No, not at all. It's not like we're recommending like you go watch like Gene Gilman or something. Like <laughs> a four that. hour and twenty minute film or some shit. But yeah. um, um, well, it's not four hour and twenty. It's like three hour and twenty minutes. But, Something like so, that. Whatever. It's you start to forget sometimes. But <laughs> yeah. um, by the way, guys, we just released a Criterion Hall video where me and Perry, we were or Perry and I, whatever fucking grammar Nazis <laughs> out there. Um, we went to a Barnes and Noble in our city, and we just had a blast. Uh, just looking at all the Criterion films because there's a half off sale there now. For those of you who don't know. Uh, all the criterions at Barnes and Noble are half off, so I would capitalize on that if you can. Uh, but we just released a vlog on that. I'll th that'll be at the end screen of this video. Um, so check that out if you're interested. All I know is that we had a great time, and Perry, like I swear to God, like when you watch the video, he had a stack. I, like at one point, the stack he had was like this <laughs> fucking big. Twenty eight films at one point, and yeah. I narrowed it down to what like fifteen. But films. that's because he he hasn't he he doesn't own any Criterion's at all. Not at all. So and and he he, he doesn't own that many Blu-rays. Period. So yeah. like he had a, he there he had so much that he just had to have. I I I own a lot of the must haves already, so my stack wasn't that big. But um, it was just, I, regardless, I just had a good time. And it was just it was just fun to watch Perry just, like, have a blast getting all these masterpieces. We were a couple of kids in a candy store, <laughs> pretty much, especially me, since it was my first time uh, picking out Criterion films. Oh, yeah, for sure. It, it's funny, because most people will just see, oh, these are just DVDs. Like, these are DVDs! Yeah, okay, these are blu-rays 1080p quality right but really the reason why i buy criterions the, like the biggest reason is because they have so many great special features on them because like as somebody who wants to be a filmmaker and has made some short films by the way i also i have three short films on my channel affirmations mercy and snare snare is the more recent one if you haven't checked any of those out i would highly recommend it anyway i'm somebody who really wants to be a filmmaker so having those special features where it shows like how they made the film and just pretty much everything that has to do with the film, whether it's behind the scenes or like post film and everything else. Uh, I mean, post production, it's, it's a really awesome thing to have. And uh, pretty much if you buy the criteria and you've pretty much bought the best possible version of the film, because it just comes with the most, um, uh, uh special features and extras and stuff like that. So yeah, it's like, we've seen enough bad movies. We know how, not to make a movie. <laughs> it's time to watch films and watch commentary tracks that teach us how to make a movie. Exactly. Yeah, 
because once you've seen enough bad films, like you've learned enough. You can, from, yeah, you've got enough experience with uh, horrible cinema. You know what not. What, to, you, you know pretty much what doesn't work, right? Exactly. And that that also helps you from growing and knowing you know what to avoid. And right, and it also helps you as a film critic because you have a yeah. a reference point of like what doesn't work, why does this work, how does this work, yeah. you know, things like that. Yeah. Well. um... We talked a lot in this video. This is longer than I expected. It's going to be close to like, like 25, 30 minutes. But um, if you stuck around this long, I really, we really appreciate it. And um, make sure that if you really enjoyed this video, what we had to say about the climb, make sure to give it a like and share it amongst your other Kino Lord friends. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to be updated on more film-related content. Bye.